Hello presenter media fans and welcome back. My name is Kara. Today we'll be talking about creating a continuous or looping timeline. In the background you can see our timeline toolkit. This is our first toolkit available here at presentermedia.com. We do actually have another timeline toolkit available that came out a little bit more recently. What you can see happening in the background here is we do have a total of four slides that are continuing all the way through and then we are moving back to our very first slide here. You can see as it has our title there, Getting Started, Looping and Continuous Timelines. Again, today we'll be going over how to be able to create this on your own. Now this is just our original timeline. It doesn't have anything changed to it right now. It's got all, all of the eight original slides in it. As you can see, our first step will be to get rid of these additional slides. We don't need those for this particular slideshow as I'm just going to show you a very quick breakdown of how to be able to create this. Our first step will be to create a new slide and then copy over the timeline that was existing in the first two slides. So now we have slide number three and it has its own little timeline on the bottom here. And now that timeline is completely blank We're going to copy and paste this slide one more time so we can have a total of four. Now the first step to do is hold down your shift button and select all four slides. If you are on number four, you can hold down shift and select number one and it'll automatically select all the slides. We're going to click transitions, one of the top tabs at the top of your screen. And in the ribbon, you'll see all the various transitions we can have. For our presentation, we want to have push and notice how it's automatically set to go from the bottom to the top. We do want to change that so it's going from the right. This is what's going to be able to show the linear progression of the slides. Our next step will be able to address the actual animations in each window that we already have. In our particular case, we're going to go ahead and get rid of the animations. You're more than welcome to keep them, but for our purposes, it shows the timeline to its fullest potential when those animations are not popping up in and out. I'm going to go ahead and copy over a few random elements just to be able to show you the process of moving graphics so they'll be able to bleed from one slide to another. We grabbed the birthday present first. We copied it straight from slide number two, we pasted it to slide number three, and you can see how it's bleeding over the edge of that slide there, right there on the edge. And then we also pasted it onto slide number four. Now on slide number four, go ahead and select that present, hold down the shift button, and pull that present to the left of the screen. Now you can compare it to the image on the right that's still there, how far over do we have to go to be able to make it look like this will bleed onto slide number four from slide number three? This looks like it's pretty close. I don't know if it's just exact or not, but it should be relatively close. Let's move it over just a little bit more to the right here. You can move objects within PowerPoint one step at a time instead of the standard larger moves by holding down the control button as you move them. This will only move them one small space at a time instead of the larger groups of spaces. To be able to test out this transition that we have here, go ahead and play your slideshow just from the current slide. Alright, so it looks like the present is okay, but that transition was awfully quick. So let's go ahead and select all four of those slides again, go to our transitions, and this is why that was showing up so fast, is our duration. This is how long it'll take to move from one slide to the next after we click. So we'll go ahead and we'll actually change this to about five seconds. Five is pretty, ma is pretty manageable for most folks. And if you're not going to be with your presentation, it's a nice thing to be able to have it play after a couple of seconds on each slide. All right, now let's go back up to our slideshow and give it a shot. Let's see how it comes in. You can see how much slower it's coming in. And if it is going to be something that's going to be scrolling continuously, speed is essential. 
Now we can see that our box is just about perfect, but not quite. It looks like our bottom one may be just a tad bit too far over to the left, so we're just going to move it one more spot to the right here. Wait our two seconds that we have for our delay. Alright, that looks a little bit cleaner there. Now the trick is to be able to make sure to create a seamless look that each of these images are always lining up. And we want them to either be perfect or as close as humanly possible. Now by being able to move with these small individual moves, that's usually not a problem. So let's go ahead and grab a few more elements here. We're just going ahead and copying and pasting them directly from one slideshow to the next. And you can see that these already do have text boxes in them. I'm ignoring those for now. In most folks' cases, they would be taking these various elements. Let's not put it on that one. Let's put it on this one. They'd be taking these various elements out of their own database for either the images for their companies or various flowcharts and things like that. Alright, let's go ahead and test this now. We're just going ahead and click play. Slide number one, moving into slide number two, moving into slide number three. Here we go with slide number four, and then it will double back around and go back to slide number one. Now anytime that you do want to be able to have that bleed over effect from one slide to the next, keep in mind that that will not pause during the transition, so you'll want to keep your text to a minimum or slow the duration of your transition to a, as slow as possible without it being just a crawling speed. My name is Kara with presentermedia.com and thanks so much for listening to today's tutorial.